Thy Kingdom Come. The front line originally scheduled to air at this time has been postponed. It will be broadcast at a later date. Funding for Frontline is provided by this station and other public television stations nationwide and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Tonight on Frontline, the pain and isolation of mental illness. See, I'm mentally ill, I'm hard of hearing, and I'm different. See, I got all that on me. One out of five American adults is mentally ill. How do they feel about their lives? Little kids laugh at me, think I'm a clown. That hurts. They are alone and afraid. I'm not going to start crying here. Tonight, people caught in psychological storms, a matter of the mind. From the network of public television stations, a presentation of KCTS Seattle, WNET New York. WPBT Miami, WTVS Detroit, and WGBH Boston. This is Frontline with Judy Woodruff. Good evening. Millions of Americans are mentally ill. They live in a world that is fragile and often frightening. The costs of mental illness to both individuals and society are enormous, and yet we know so little about it its victims seem different and strange. Historically, we have tried to hide the mentally ill. Our fear and ignorance have added to their isolation, suffering, and guilt, and that of their families. Tonight, in a special rebroadcast, you're going to get to know some people with severe forms of mental illness. In their own words, you will hear how they struggle against psychological demons and confront the social stigma of their disease. Our program is called A Matter of the Mind. It's produced and directed by Robert Thurber of WCCO-TV in Minneapolis. This is Central Manor. It's a halfway house in St. Paul, Minnesota. For the 60 to 70 people who live here, it offers a safe haven after the battering and turmoil of a psychological storm. Most of the residents have been hospitalized before, many more than once. It's impossible to know how quickly or how completely the wounds of the mind may heal. Some of the residents stay for only a few months. Others stay for years. Come on in. When Nancy was a child, her parents thought her behavior was odd. And when she was 12, they put her in a state institution where she remained until she was 18. Did you ever see so many dolls in all your life? This one in the yellow is my favorite. This one's my second favorite. Where's that from? Uh, France, made in France. How long have you been collecting these dolls? 12, doll 12 years. It'll be 13 years in February. 13 years I've collected dolls. What do you like about them so much? They're pretty to look at. They're pretty to look at. Uh, Who are those people up there? My niece and nephew. Here they are over here. That's Kathy. Kathy. And here is... Here's David. He's... Eight years old now. This is his recent one. Mm -hmm. He's my brother's little boy. Uh -huh. And that's my brother's little girl. She's 13 now. And that's me. That's me. Nancy has lived most of her life within the mental health system, separated from her family. Recently, she lost all her hearing. She can understand others only by lip reading. Bride and groom, some people that I know, my, my brother's wife's brother, and that's his wife, gets dusty. And then here's my father. He's a nice looking man for his age. 
I take three kind. I take four pills really: Artane, Stelzine, Melorel, and Provera. Those are the only four I take. But if I didn't take the, that medicine, I'd have to go to an institution. I really would. Like nearly all the other residents of Central Manor, Nancy relies on medication to help control her illness. These neuroleptic drugs don't cure mental illness. They only help to subdue its symptoms and make life more manageable. But frequently, they produce unpleasant side effects, drowsiness, blurred vision, muscle tremors, dry mouth, weight gain, and slurred speech, to name just a few. Although many side effects can be kept in check with additional medications, there is a danger in long-term use of these drugs. They can cause permanent nerve damage. Despite 30 years of debate over the use of neuroleptics, professional opinion weighs heavily in their favor. And most of the people at Central Manor told us the side effects are worth it if the medication can protect them from the horrors of the disease. Observe run for stiffness, med reaction. Yeah. That's Anything from the other day? Was it a toxic reaction by any chance? He no. was looking better when I saw him, and he was looking better yet when somebody else saw him later in the day. Okay, good. Um, I think he's probably mm -hmm. just made contact with him, continue to draw him back into reality, talk about realistic things with him. He's responsive if somebody's there to respond to him, but he's not going to seek anyone out. Right. So we've got to, when we see him, seek him out. Give him good feedback if he's not isolating himself, too. Mm -hmm. How they found out that that I was manic depressive was by me think where my my reality and my fan fantasy mel mixed together and I thought I could transport myself into another century and just escape from everybody and it, this this method does not work. <laughs> um, when I'm sick, I can't pull them apart. I can't say, whoa, Rick, stop. Cool down. In that, That's when I'm getting sick. And that, that's when the hospital may be needed. When I can pull myself, when, when I can, I might start this, start swinging an Adam sword or something, and I just prance around. But I can, I can keep myself from going under. Then, then that means that I'm healthier. I can. I've learned how to how to differentiate from fantasy and, and reality. And this is my Artane. What does Artane do? Artane... I forgot. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay. I could be wrong, but I'll give it a shot. It blocks the shaking. Right, it's for side effects. Side effects. Okay. What, is, right. what does lithium do? It controls my, my... Rick was first hospitalized shortly after he graduated from high school. He's lucky because his family has stayed close to him. Before he goes home for a weekend visit, Rick and his social worker review his medications. Her job is to help him learn how to live with his illness. What does Stelazine do? You wouldn't accept it if I said I wouldn't, I don't know, right? I want you to give it a guess. Okay. I think it's also for side effects. Okay. See if any of this sounds familiar, and then you remember, interrupt me, and finish it off. Okay. Stelazine is an antipsychotic drug. Oh, yeah. Do you want to continue? No. <laughs> Sorry. Do you remember? I, I remember that part now. It's an antipsychotic drug. I, don't, I still don't know what it does, but okay. well, I don't know what an antipsychotic drug is. What it does is changes some of the chemicals in your brain so that it helps you to think more clearly. And if you have delusions or 
hallucinations, it would make those go away. I see. There's none in here. Yeah, that one. Oh, in here? Yeah. Mike is the father of three young sons. Two are from his first marriage, and one is from his second. Both marriages broke up because of Mike's chronic mental health problems. He feels lucky because his second wife brings his youngest son by for frequent visits. It was just a lot of paranoia and a lot of scary thoughts that I've had, you know, and they were really hard to deal with, and I didn't take my medication, too, so that had a lot to do with it. Now I'm on medications, and I feel like I can handle it now, pretty much. You know, I know what's real and what isn't real. Before, I didn't know what was real and what wasn't real. Was that scared? Oh, yeah, it really is. I don't know, it's just like if I had a real close friend to talk to or something, it wouldn't have been so bad, but I didn't have nobody to talk to or nothing. Not having my wife there, not having my little boy there anymore, you know, being all alone and not having a family and having no direction or purpose or anything. Just being, it's being out of control. It's just, you can't explain it. It's just, it's just all unreal. You know, all the stuff that you think. Everything you, you think of as a fantasy, I mean, comes true. Only it's in your mind. It's not visually, but it's in your mind and it's, and it's there, you know, and you can't, you can't see the, the realness or the unrealness of it. And I keep having these breakdowns. I've had them for 15 years. Or I gotta go on medications and then I get off them and then I go back on medications and I go off them and I get back on them. You know, I wanna get off them. <clears throat> I don't, or I don't wanna get off the medications. I wanna, I wanna get normal. I wanna, I wanna be like you guys, you know? I wanna be out there in the world and experiencing normal things and normal behaviors and normal, normal people. And, uh, you want to come up here? You know what? What is, tell me, what is Michael mean to you? Michael? Yeah. Well, he means a lot to me. He means, he means my future. Um, he's in my plans for the future as far as buying him stuff and being with him and growing up with him from time to time. What does he do for you? That's in terms of how he makes you feel. Brings tears to my eyes. He always does that. Gets me emotional. Uh, no, be great. <coughs> yeah. Tell me about pool. Pool? You wanna play pool? Yeah. All right. No, he means a lot to me. How often do you get to see him, Mike? Oh, just about any time I want to. My wife knows I was a good father to him. And... See, I've been away from God for about two weeks, you know what I mean? God. And I thought that uh, everything bad seems to happen to me, you know what I mean? And I pray to God all the time and nothing happens for the good, you know. So I went away from God for two weeks and now I'm back with him. Have things gotten better? Yeah, things are. But I, I don't know, uh, see, how to say it because, I, see, I'm mentally ill, I'm hard of hearing, and I'm different. See, I got all that on me. Nobody else can survive my life, nobody. But when you pray, do you feel God listens? Wait, what, what? When you pray, do you feel God listens? God, God listens? No, I don't. Then why do you continue to pray? Because uh, I think he's got a, a mission for me, you know what I mean? There must be some reason why I had to suffer all my life, see? And in Catholic religion, or I, know, I, I know about the other religions, but they teach that the more suffering you go to, 
more heavily you are and the more pious you are, you know what I mean? And still believe in God. That's hard, you know. At one time, Maureen was married to Ron. Although they have been divorced for a few years, they still rely on each other for support and companionship. It's difficult for them when they are separated and not placed in the same mental health facility. They've been together at Central Manor now for almost two months. People will uh, look at me different and they shun me, you know what I mean? And uh, I, that's why I have everything bad happen to me because, you know, the uh, people, people just don't go with me, you know, there's some, I mean, uh, that I can't communicate and, they, you know, they don't want nothing to do with me. We have, no, we have known each other for about 11 years, 12 years about, I'd be 12 in about April or something like that. 12 years, wow. <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm not on my mind. <laughs> Are you very close? Yeah, very close, extremely close. How does Ron help you? Well, so, let's see, support. let's see. Say support. Yeah, he gives me support and, uh, I don't know, he shows me that, you know, I don't know, I, I, uh, he had a life like me. He's like me, that's why, he's like me. What do you need from her? What do I need? Uh, just by being close to her. I, Companionship, you know. This rug, this rug takes a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of skill. I don't know what you're doing in order to do these rugs. I learned how in high school. I made a purple rug in high school. Is the purple rug was this big. It, had, it was a little kid's rug. It had a clown. had a picture of a clown. I made it for my sister when she was pregnant. Janet was just a child when she was stricken with Tourette syndrome, a disease of the nervous system that causes her to make sudden movements and sounds that she cannot control. But Janet has other problems as well. She scratches the skin off her face, arms, and legs whenever she gets nervous and upset. And she is addicted to alcohol. Well, you see, nigger, I had his Tourette syndrome. Nigger, I had his Tourette syndrome since I was in grade school, child about nine years old. First I started out grunting, and as I got older, he used to go like this, like this one, pressed. And I used to go like this, like a dancer. No, I just nigger. I say nick, and I get stick tongue out once in a while. When I get my, when I get that month, it gets worse. Otherwise, hell dolls taking care of the rest. That's all I got to say. I've been in a lot of hospitals for that. Had a lot of blood tests. Had a lot of um, brain scans. People. I don't know, it's strangers think I'm crazy. Sometimes I think it's because I can't get a boyfriend because of Tourette syndrome. And so I get a man who has it. Nobody else wanted me to say. I wanted to ask you, um, how, how do you deal with this syndrome? How do you try to, to live with it? What do you have to do? Take medicine. That's all I can do. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't. Can't, I can't do nothing about it. I wish there was a cure. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us to help us understand better so that when you say that strangers don't understand, what would you want them to understand about it? I want them to know I can't help what I do. Sometimes I swear. Sometimes I go, ah! or D! That's part of the nerve problem. I say dance like that. Kind of funny, ain't it? But it's not to me. 
How does it make you feel? How do you feel about it? Sometimes I'm sad about it, but nothing I can do, I see. Well, that's about all. Can't think. Nigger, nigger, nigger's my mother. My mother had a stroke on January 1st of 1984, a year ago. Now she's in Birchwood Nursing Home. I like to, I like to go see her again. Sometimes I cry for my mother. What do you want to do, Jack? What would you like to do the rest of your life? Clean. I like to clean. I love to clean. I always want to become a dancer, though. Could you imagine me intelligent dancing? Dance. Dance! Mm, that'd be fun. Do you do much dancing here? Whenever there's a party, but I can never find a partner. So I don't want to dance unless I got a partner. Seems like I gotta dance with the broom or something when I can't find a partner. This is lithium, and this is not a street drug. I want that to be known. And I use that mainly for my, I guess it's low lithium in the brain. So I take more lithium to balance it out. I think that's how it goes, I'm not sure. So I'm going to take this right now. That's it. And do you notice a significant difference when you're on your medication and taking it regularly? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I would either be too depressed to get out of bed without my medication. Okay. Or too high mm -hmm. to really get uh, anything accomplished. Do you ever have difficulty feeling a sense of belonging or, or not belonging to what is the family? That? The family, the friends, the community, yeah. whatever. I have a difficulty because what I'm, what I'm feeling is not just depression, but it's 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 a fear. It's a a fear a fear of failure. Like you you um like you've just made your family, or you disgraced your family, and you just can't see anybody. It's so unacceptable. It's so I don't know. It's so unexplainable. I didn't know what was happening to me. It was felt, it was like water rushing from my body and I couldn't gather it up again. I don't know, it's, it, it was a long time ago. Is this difficult for you to talk about now? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, people can uh, get me upset easy because of the way I am, you understand? Yeah. No two people because are the same. I know it, but I'm not like anybody, all right? Nobody. That's right. And they know they can get to me, see? They know they can get to me. It's okay to get mad, but it's not okay to be as mad as you've been for the last three days. Mm. It's not okay to live here. It's okay to be that mad, but not to live here and be that mad. Mm. Because what happens... Well, what are you doing? Kicking me out then or what? No, I'm not kicking you out. Yeah? I'm putting out a little warning flag so that you know what the stakes are. So, so why not? So that you you know what's going on. I'm saying that the way you're, you're gonna kick me out, right? No, nope, no. Nope, I'm not saying I'm gonna kick you out, but I'm yeah, saying what? that the situation right now needs to change. Mm, right, I know it. It needs to change. I know that, but I can't help it. You see, I cannot okay. help it. I would be like that if I could. All these people are on my ass. You know what I mean? They're on my ass. You know it. I believe that you think that they're all on your ass. Mm -hmm. I believe that you think that. It isn't that way. I don't believe everyone's on, after you. Most of them, then. Most of them. It's a time that burns me. Have you ever had your tongue burned on people? Eve is shy, and the world is a threatening place for her. It takes a long time before she is able to trust someone and feel safe. Want to use the cup, Eve? No. No? 
I want to make sure you tell me and show me what you got. Okay. Well, you run meds. Then you have all the so-called side effects or whatever the meds involved. You, you've been on them in the first place. And then, you know, what, why you got on the meds. So if you're acting crazy. But I don't think you... I never acted crazy and I was put on meds. But they say I was. I, I remember I was up, I was living with Colin Robert Murphy up, no, up near Wadena where my sister and her husband live and four kids. And we were on a farm and I, one, one day I went, we had a pink, pink house we painted red. Kyle, that's what I called him. Kyle, and I, I went out on the side, the side porch and I started having ceremonies for, um, it was a ritual. So this was off meds and off anything. I wasn't even smoking herb, you know, marijuana as they call it, or anything. And um, that's what my mother would want me to say, to make sure I wasn't on some, but you know, it's not that you do anyway. But anyway, um, I buried all these skeletons in a ritual. It was a, and the next thing I knew, I was down in, um, um, there, were, there were skeletons, there were bugs and things. <laughs> I was down in uh, St. Mary's Hospital. They brought me down to St. Mary's. And I stayed there, and then that was the end of Cal. And, um, uh, I was into the hospitals, and that was in 1973. And I haven't been out since. Okay, I'm gonna check your scratches again for tomorrow. These are really old already, come okay, on. Okay, don't pick them. Okay. Show me your arms too. That happened a week ago. A week ago? Okay. See that, that's an old scratch. How did the doctor tell you to take care of these? By putting cream on. Mm -hmm. What else did he say? Don't pick them, don't scratch no more. Right, what else did he say? He prescribed some medicine for menstrual cramps. Okay, what else did he say about your scratches, though? We almost cut it. Nothing, that's about all. Okay. Don't pick, don't scratch. Yeah, he said, don't put band-aids on them, too. Right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Let the air get at it. Yeah, so they can heal faster that way. They're itching right now. Okay. What are you going to do about the itching? Put cream on it. Mm -hmm. Remember what Cliff Olia told you, too? That when they itch... Just to pat them. Oh, no touch, that hurts. Okay, sorry. Mike used to hold down as many as two or three jobs at a time. He supported his family, owned his own home, and had some country property outside of town. Now he has nothing. He works in the kitchen one afternoon a week for some pocket money. Mike, yeah. do you live here too? Yeah, I live here too. Could you read the, f the first page of the letter, the one that, that you wrote? Read the first page? Yes. Okay. Bob, you said you wanted to understand me. If you read this, you will understand me better. When I did something wrong, my mother would say to me, Nancy, I am going to tell your father and let him give you another spanking when he comes home. 
So I waited for him to come home and spank me. I was always afraid of him. My father didn't hug me after he spanked me or say, Daddy, sorry he had to spank you. Now after I'm grown up, I still feel I should be spanked by other people, though. That's probably why I want to hurt others or myself to do something bad so I can get a spanking for it and knowing I'm still loved. How do you want people to love you? By spanking me. That's the only thing I want so much. Why is that better than being hugged? Why is that better than being hugged? Because you get closer to the person. Get closer to the person that way. Just like a person having sex feels cared for. They want to be loved, so they have sex together. And they feel loved about that. Well, this is the way it makes me feel, loved. I want it and I dream about it and think about it and want it. Just like a girl wants sex with a boy, you know? That's the way I'll always be, probably. But I lost all my real friends because of being in this system. I think just my, even my family has kind of let go of me. You know, they don't do things with me or anything. Kind of leave me out in, in the open, you know, they don't... I don't know, we're just not that close anymore. If I always thought myself mentally ill, mm -hmm. I would have no hope for myself. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the point. I want to crack myself out of that shell by, by acting goofy. It's not the right way, I know that, but I do that. But what happens when you act goofy? Well, then everybody thinks I'm a nut. Mm -hmm. And why do they think that? Because they're, they're, they think they're seeing the real me. A lot of people, Rechu, have your diagnosis, you know, manic depression, man, man. have that problem. They think because being manic makes them feel good that it's okay and it's healthy to be that way. And it's not. It's false. It's not real. My world is going to start caving in on me. Yeah. When I, when I have to go out in the world and get a job, I can't be fantasizing. I have to be, re I have to be the reality Rick Kohlsacker. Mm -hmm. When I get a girlfriend, I have to talk to her like I am, not like, like I am Rick Kohlsacker. I can't be John Wayne or Elvis Presley. They won't accept me that way. They might accept me by being myself. That's a real hard thing for me to do because a lot of myself is so undeterminable. It's so iffy. I've been hurt with my reality life that I just slip in my fantasy life and everything is okay. I can't tell the future, but I do know that the longer you try to live in your fantasies that way, the harder it's going to be to develop who the real Rich Hozacker is. I'm sure it's right, what you're saying. I'm, I know it's not wrong, but I have a hard time at times uh, accepting that. Mm -hmm. It has come from inside. I'm not going to start crying here. We had a good session. <laughs> If you want to cry, go ahead. No, my eyes are watering. <laughs> That's enough. I mean, I don't want to start crying now. It's a good time. It's a good time talking to you and getting this out in the open and getting me ah, to realize this. Ah, Rick, Rick, that's shit. It's not a good time at all. Like, I'm destroying, or at least trying to destroy, something that you've got a lot of comfort and enjoyment out of. That's not a good time. My fantasy life, my fantasy life is like an easy chair. Mm -hmm. And I've just been trying to take a hatchet to it. <laughs> not getting much luck, are you? Well, I think you have. I, I like this. Mm.
I do too. Eve is an artist. She was trained to be a painter. And as you see the painting evolve, does it change much for you? Well, it constantly changes. I mean, as you as you progress, and uh, uh, you just pick up what. Like I didn't think I was going to use yellow at the beginning, but it it turned out to be the color that I wanted the most at the end. You can't tell what you're going to do at the beginning of the painting, and uh, you pick up what. I mean, you see, it was many layers ago that I did this pink. Although she has tried several times, Eve has not been able to paint for the last few years. Uh, having an idea in your mind and, and putting it on black and white, on, on whether you paint in red and orange, <coughs> put it down on paper <coughs> and see it, it form a new... Um, I hadn't thought this out now. Let's see. Form a new, a new, a new reality from where you, what you saw it in when you when you originally conceived painting it. I mean, you you can just um, a lot of my painting is just abstract, not abstract, but uh, well representational of of something else. But it does. It has no. Um, uh, you can't see. I don't want to talk. Is that okay? Sure. You know, they sit around there and they gossip and everything like that. What's that? Usually about me. What do you think they're talking about? Well, probably different ways to bug me. Look at them trying to uh, bug me. Look at that guy there trying to bug me. See? They're stupid, really stupid, those people over there. They're stupid. These people are so low mentality, honest to God, really. You know what I mean? And they got their nerve to bug me. Everything seems so hateful. I mean, the people seem so hateful. And I, I don't know if that's my imagination, but you know what I mean? Do you have any family around, Maureen? Yes, I do. I got seven sisters. Do you get to see them much? No, I don't want to see them. They hate me anyway, my family. No, I need to. I'm not going to wipe off your tongue. Come here. When Mike asks you about the time that you were living here, what are you going to explain to him? I don't know. I don't know what to tell him. It's really embarrassing. I'll have to explain to him, you know, someday about it. Same with my other two boys, that I do have a problem that I'm schizophrenic. I hope they love me just the way I am. I always wanted the best for my boys. You know, I wanted to do exactly what was right for them. You know, I can do it for them. At least I can do it for them. Let them know they got a good dad. <laughs> never, never, never. Ain't my mother a nice looking mother in this picture? Ain't my mother a nice looking woman? Mama. 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 How about that picture up on the wall there, dance for you? That's a nerder. That's a ballerina. Picture of a ballet dancer I drew. She's on, I seen her on dance fever, and I thought she was so cute dancing like that, I wanted to keep it. Oh, that's why I like dancing. That's why I like, that's why I got a ballerina on the wall, because I want to, because I like to see her dance. Dance! Here's a picture of my kitty cat and a puppy dog. Here's a picture of Brian. Here's the workshop I drew the other day. Basketball court parking lot and me. What does that say in the uh, in between there? Hey, Foxy, my panel mama, and it's me. Each weekday, Janet attends a living skills workshop at a local community center. Here's a good mop. She prides herself on her cleaning talents. This is a beautiful 
mop. This mop is tearing off. It's loose. Mm. Well, so far, mopping streaking. Oh, there's streaking. See what I mean about this dumb mop? It streaks. Come on, mop. Quit streaking, mop. Mop. I don't mind mopping floors, but when the mop streaks, I don't like it. It ain't me, it's the mop. I told my boss to get some new mops. We your rag mops. Not stupid old, dumb old sponge mop. Dumb mop. There, the floor looks beautiful. That's why they call me Mop Panel Mama. I like to knit, it's relaxing. I like to do needlepoint and embroidery and counter cross stitch and rug hooking and Swedish weaving and crocheting. I'm proud of my work because then I can give it to someone whom I love. What I have to do is make a life out there for me. There's no life out there. This is the life in here. That's what I live in. And that's what I trap myself in. And if I don't break out of it, I'll never have a normal life. Ooh, look at the flower. Look at that flower. Exquisite. Oh, God, I wish my mom could see this. Rick attends a pre-vocational program four days a week. It doesn't teach him specific job skills, but focuses instead on how to behave appropriately once he has a job. Send it right in there, just like that. Put it back where you got it. That's fine, that's fine. Read it over, get an idea what it's about. If you have any questions, ask me, then we can sit down and fill it out. Oh, all right. But this is also on the supplemental assistance, the MSA. Oh, I see. And so that'll go along with uh, the Social Security stuff. You can okay. keep this to keep it in. All right. And, uh, after more than six months at Central Manor, Mike decided he wanted to move out and live on his own. He asked his social worker to help him make his plans. Fill it out before then, but why don't you take some time, read it over. Any questions, All right. let me know. All right, Dara. See you later. Yeah. First, they went to the public housing agency so Mike could apply for an apartment. We got it. We'll fill out an application. And then after that, uh, you'll be interviewed by one of the rental people, rental technicians. You have no savings account, no checking account, no U.S. savings bonds, no stocks, no real estate, no cash. No. I got some cash on me, a little bit of, I got about $30, something like that. But not cash in excess of $100? No. Do you own any real estate? No, I don't. Do you have a business? No. Have you disposed of any assets for less than fair market value in the last two years? No. Okay. You're getting Social Security, 490 a month? Right. Is that Social Security disability? Right. Are you disabled or handicapped? I'm disabled. And what is your disability? Emotional illness. Later in the week, Mike went by himself to the welfare office to make sure all his financial records were up to date. Okay, your wife, is this where she's living right now? Right. Okay. As soon as that divorce becomes finalized, I want you to send in a copy of the divorce decree. All right. Okay. I'm afraid of failing. You know, I'm afraid of not being able to make it and be in the same boat again in a year from now. I'm scared of all them things. If I go out there, I want to do it this time. I want to be able to hold down a job, and I want to be able to support my kid, give him a little bit of money. I've had a lot of normal times in my lifetime. I've had a lot of good jobs. I've had a home. Now I just, you know, I don't have nothing. And that's scary, not having nothing. No money, no home, no car. 
you know, not a family no more. I'm out of control, you know, in that sense. You know, I don't have a grip on life. Um, my name is Deke Branchard Linsk. I'm a social worker from Central Manor. And I'd like to make an appointment for Marini to see Dr. Ling as soon as possible because she's feeling like a need for a change. It's pretty urgent. I'm, I'm agreeing with her. She's a real, she's real agitated right now. See, Deke? That's pretty urgent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing sooner than that. It will be another week before Maureen can get to see her psychiatrist's nurse and two weeks yeah. before she can see her psychiatrist. So Wednesday at 9... <laughs> and I usually pray about me and Ronnie sticking together and helping each other out too, you know. That's the most important. I, I like I like the uh, picture of the Virgin Mary, you know. That's the one I like. Makes you feel good, you know, that's all. You know, it makes you feel good. I'll always be like this. I'll always have a bad like this all my life. You know, I'll, that's the way it is. Because of the way I am. See? But uh, without Ronnie, I could not exist. You know, I survived. I mean, survived. Exist, I could, but not survive. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't think of that, man. Damn. 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 Okay, the coffee's really good. Yeah, that was awesome. Mayo? All right, just a minute. I'm done. Let's speed it up a little bit. Okay, I see ya. Yeah. 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 They say I'm schizophrenic, which I am, I know that. Hate to admit it, but I am. Oh. Be careful, Mike. Getting paranoid about people, what they think of me, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. They think I'm crazy or they think I'm weird or <laughs> whatever. I guess I worry about that a lot. Seems like I'm fighting for my sanity all the time. Nigger, nigger, nigger. This tab is better than Jack Daniels. Better than beer. I drink this every time I buy something to drink. Oh, this is good pop. Wait till I get some more money, I might buy some whole case of it. And have it up in my room and treat me, guys. Oh, you got a cup and you put some ice in a cup at least so I can drink the pop out of this. A large cup. Or a 12 ounce cup. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna go somewhere else and talk with you guys. Why don't you buy yourself some ice cream? <laughs> a few days before, the manager told us, Janet caused a disturbance by swearing when the restaurant was full at lunchtime. He told her to leave. I was sitting at a cigarette. There's no ashtrays on those tables over there. Don't worry, I won't be. I'll talk to those boys. Um, the only reason I ask is because during our rush hour, lunch hour, 
she came in and, and made a, a lot of trouble for customers. Yeah. And so I don't want to end up on the wrong end of it. Sure, I, no, I appreciate that. Okay, I wanted to find out what was going on. Okay, no, I understand. Because I'm trying to run a business and she's in there. Don't come back. What if I do, then what are you going to do? Call cops? I've been in jail before, I don't want to go again. What would I do wrong? I was just one of those sat down, I just come from work. Although she disturbed no one today, the manager told her to leave again. Don't you ever do it again or I'll sue you. They don't want me that long. Please, man. Yes. Some guy threw me on the very thing and I was talking and I was talking to myself. You were. I was talking. Let's go talk to yourself on the place. Where do you want to go? Where are you headed for? Some, I want to sit down and have a pop. I got a sore throat. Okay, why don't you come this way? We'll sit down over here. I don't know why they threw me out. I wasn't doing nothing. What would you like to tell them? Tell them sorry how I'm being. And they say, that's all right. We know you can't help, but I'd be happier. Little kids laugh at me, think I'm a clown. That hurts. They just look at me funny and turn their heads. I don't want to talk about that. It hurts me. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Just deal with it the best way I can. I don't want to tell the whole world that I'm mentally ill or that I'm crazy. I want to go out in the world and I want to show them that I can go out in the world and not act crazy. And I can still fantasize, but keep it to myself and not use other people who might not understand. I cried three times today out in my room. I dreamt that my nigger, nigger. I dreamt that my mother ran out on me. What makes you happy? What do you like? Dancing. Dance. So I say dance. Dancing. Dancing makes you laugh. The ballet is the prettiest thing. It's beautiful. What's the prettiest thing about them? Don't pick, Janet. Don't pick. The plie, they go like, they go like this, like this. I like ballet so much I dream about it sometimes, but mostly I dream about my mother. Because I feel that I can never get another spanking from anyone, you know? So I think about jumping out the window or dying in bed, and I think I deserve to be loved, don't you? Very much so. Do you ever think that you actually would kill yourself? Well, it, I have thought of it real, real, uh, real deep. Yes, I believe I would. Over a year has passed since we first met the residents of Central Manor. Their lives have changed. Nancy left Central Manor and now is living semi-independently in an apartment with some supervision. Rick took an overdose of sleeping pills. Fortunately, he didn't seriously hurt himself. He was recently hospitalized and now lives at another halfway house in St. Paul. Janet has had her ups and downs with alcohol and drug abuse. At one point, she was hospitalized for a time. Currently, she lives at the same halfway house as Rick. Eve is now living at a halfway house in the northern rural area of Minnesota. Soon after this program was completed, Mike decided to move out. He said he was getting better, and he no longer needed the support of the mental health system. But within a week, he put himself back into the hospital. Last we heard, he was living in a room at the YMCA. <laughs> it seems like this is sort of like the last stop before we're out on the street, you know. It's like a slow death. 
they'll probably kill people like us because we're different. You know what I mean? Ron and Maureen separated, and Ron now is in a state mental hospital in Minnesota. Maureen, after continued deterioration of her condition, also had to be committed to a state mental hospital. Last year, Central Manor closed. There was no longer enough money to keep up the old building. The residents were slowly placed in other facilities. But finding space in a financially strained mental health system hasn't been easy. And finding neighborhoods willing to accept places like Central Manor also is no easy task. The people we met tonight desperately need to know they have not been abandoned. They tell us they need to know whether or not they recover, someone cares. Please join us again for Frontline. I'm Judy Woodruff. Good night. Next week on Frontline, they fought this country's first integrated war, black Vietnam veterans. They were young, mostly poor, mostly undereducated, the foot soldiers of a mean and dirty war and the targets of enemies that were not always Vietnamese. Did you see a cross burned in Vietnam? Yeah. Where? In front of my hut. Watch the Bloods of Nam. For a transcript of this program, please send $4 to Frontline, Box 322, Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. Frontline is produced for the Documentary Consortium by WGBH Boston, which is solely responsible for its content. Funding for Frontline was provided by this station and other public television stations nationwide, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.